Video game. What a phenomenal run, Recall. You the goat for real, for real. That donation was for $5. Thank you so much, Hypnotics. I also have one here from Tassel for $50 who says, Honk, wait, no, uh, 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 shoot, bleed. Great job, Reek. Goats, goats, goats. Cheers, Tass. I have a donation here from Manticore for $50 who says, looking forward to Toy Story. I mean, it'll bleed. Go Punchy. I'm looking forward to it too. And uh, we're all in luck because Punchy is ready to go. Here is Ill Bleed Any Percent. Hello, everyone. I'm Punchy. This is Ill Bleed. And joining me today, we have. I guess I'll Thank start. Uh, yes. I'm uh, Ichthysis. I do a lot of spooky games. Uh, hello, I'm Maxi Lopes. I also do a lot of spooky games. It's the spooky game corner. Well, actually, it's not. This is not actually the horror block. But either way, we've got all the horror runners together. It feels like it. Right. I'm going to start going, and I'm going to have to rattle off a bunch of stuff really quick, because frankly, Illbleed is a survival horror game, but also it's like not like any other video game on planet Earth. So there's a lot of ground to cover very quickly. So we'll get started in five, four, three, two, one, video games. Right on. So the basic premise of Illbleed is that we are Eriko Christie, a purple-haired girl who goes to a theme park to find her friends because they went to the theme park ahead of her, but they haven't come back because the theme park, like, kills people. Very bad. So the first thing I'm going to do in this run is purchase uh, medical bandages. Those will cure bleeding. So, first thing I need to explain is the interface, because this is a lot. Uh, starting at the bottom, the thing in the bottom left is the adrenaline meter. That's what we use to tag traps. We'll get to that later. The green bar is health. The red number is your heart rate. Your heart rate, uh, if it caps out at 255, you die. You die of shock. So we're entering the first level here, the home run of death. Every level is sort of like a themed attraction. This is a trap. I'm going to get beamed in the face by this plank. You can't avoid this. That raised my heart rate by five. That's a trivial amount. It's just kind of there to teach you how the game works. I'll be it quite poorly because they hit the tutorial behind the wall in this game. So in order to tag traps, you need to find the horror monitor in every level. And the horror monitor makes all four of the sensors at the top of the screen blink when you get near it. So that's how you know that there's a trap. So you see the sight sensors blinking, so we know there's a trap here. This one is fixed. The Excuse me. This one is fixed. This always happens. So we know we can tag this one, avoid taking damage, and reclaim adrenaline for a successful tag. Now, the rest of the traps are randomly generated, but from three given patterns. So the first order of business in any run is determine which pattern we're on. It's not pattern A. I've ruled that out immediately. If it's not the light bulb, it's not pattern A. Uh, C. It's definitely C based on how the horror monitor blinked during this. So using that, I can... Snake a line through this way, avoiding the light bulb on the left, because that's a trap on pattern C. Nothing else in here. Bank hard left, because this trap's here. Nothing in the window. That's pattern C. I just ran through, like, several dangerous areas by taking the best line, because I immediately identified what my trap pattern is. That is, the basis of the ill bleed run is very quickly using the information given to you to figure out where the dangerous points are. I picked up a baseball bat. I will need that to beat things to death with later. And uh, really quick, just going to like a casual point, uh, Punchy does mention he ran through like eight traps at once. That's accurate. Uh, this game's mean. It's really mean. The tutorial's hidden behind the manual. You know how hard <laughs> it is to find a manual for a used game these days? If you don't know that, you're not going to find the horror monitor. You just have to like stumble upon it. There's an in-game tutorial. They hid it behind a wall, though. Wait, what? <laughs> it's behind the infirmary. Oh, God. Anyway, gonna bank hard right here because this will avoid all of the traps in the kitchen as well. Although I would like to pick this up. I might get too close to this, I'm going to tag that. The Kaiseki Ryori. That's a full heal item. I picked that up for safety and also because I think it's funny that the thing that represents a full heal item in this game is a picture of an elderly woman. A Kaiseki Ryori is a kind of set course meal that generally revolves around seasonal dishes. There's your culture fact for the day. Anyway, I just squeezed through like a table there. That happens. That's fine. Uh, I did it to avoid more traps. Beer bottles oh. of the trap here. This one's consistent across all the patterns, to the best of my knowledge. So I've avoided combat so far. The lines I've been taking has been to avoid combat. Combat in this game is kind of RPG-ish in that it's like enemies don't really 
wander around the zone so much as you sort of enter encounter zones and you sort of warp into like the pocket battle dimension. Uh, but I've been doing a good job of avoiding all of them so far, so we won't actually see combat for a bit. I think we actually have a skip coming up too in a moment. I know it's yep. like whenever watching you, it's always this really difficult jump that it looks a lot easier than it actually is. Yep, it's a, it's a difficult jump to skip a fight. But before that, pick up this trophy. We need that for a key item. I'm going to skip another fight in this room by flipping through a wall. Yep. Come on, Erica. Come on. Hey, there we go. Falling through. Shoutouts to my YouTube comment section for finding that one. <laughs> Literally, I posted a run of this game and some dude, like, YouTube commenter McGee, like, like first name, last name type of YouTube commenter. I've forgotten their actual name now. I'm very sorry, my guy. Uh, just posted a video being like, hey, I found this, uh, I found this skip a few years ago. Do you think you can do anything with it? And it was like, whoa, weird glitch found on an emulator three years ago. And I was like, okay, let's see if this is any good. And surprisingly, it was good. It works quite well, in fact. Yeah, also, so that's uh, what combat in Illbleed looks like, by the way. I was telling that story. Uh, yeah. what happened, how combat works is you get into, like, the encounter zone, and you escape by running over to a helipad and mashing B, because the helipad is just how running away from combat works. It said narrow escape. That's the only kind of escape there is in Illbleed. There's no such thing as wide escape. Oh. I believe that was also the uh, jump section that you could have skipped if uh, yeah. it just lined up differently. Also, really quick before we get into more ill bleed, uh, you mentioned earlier about the uh, the full course meal. Uh, Punchy's on the Japanese version, and the Japanese version has yes. Japanese food. The American version gives you cultural items like burger and steak. <laughs> yeah, the the, the kaisa kiryori in the American version is replaced with a TV steak dinner. Also, just a JPEG. Like it's literally just a photo. No donuts. <laughs> Sadly, not. One could only dream. <laughs> Narrow escape. All right, so now there's a new UI element in play, by the way. Uh, I took a little bit of damage earlier, so now there's a red bar above my green bar. That's the bleeding meter. Uh, bleeding in the ill bleed is shockingly the thing that is most likely to kill you. Bleed racks up really quickly, and if it hits a very, like, a certain amount, it will start to build up as you run. And because this is a speed run, I'm never not going to be running. And when I say a small amount, there's like a little marker on the gauge. It's not that. The marker on the gauge is at the point where you start to slowly die if it goes over that. Anyway, I have put the items in the basement. This causes Bambolo to appear. Bambolo is a guy with a flamethrower who's mad about the fact his son is dead because uh, the house burned down with him inside it. Illbeat is a weird game. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> I got so he... serious so fast. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's <laughs> Illbleed is like that. Illbleed is, there's, there's, the tonal whiplash will be a recurring thing. That's why I have his baseball bat. I'm gonna cave his head in with it. Isn't the baseball bat his son? Yep. <laughs> it's, Im it's, it's imbued with the soul of it. That's like, why I have this you. baseball bat. <laughs> um, right now, Punchy's gonna be running through like the labyrinth. Uh, it's always a set direction, but the big thing is he's gonna be going in the weird lines to actually avoid the, uh, the boss here. Uh, also, fun fact, whenever he hits you the flamethrower, it makes you bleed. I don't know if fire yep. does that normally, but yeah. It's unpleasant to get hit by fire, though. Yeah, I'm really surprised. Bit. Yeah, so this is this is one of the few instances where the enemy actually does walk around in the overworld, and tapping into him will like cause a combat encounter to begin. So we can avoid that. Large bathroom. That's one of our friends being dragged away. He was visible on the screen for exactly two seconds. That's Kevin. We saw Kevin's leg. Kevin will be useful to us, but only because he's very hard to kill. Yeah, for anyone who wants to run, I think it's a uh, true ending. Uh, yeah. I think you have to get all your friends killed. Uh, killing Kevin yep. takes 20 minutes. You just have to get lost for 20 minutes. 20 like, minutes real faster. time. In a, in a run, getting Kevin killed on purpose that you need to do for true ending because it will bleed is like that. You just kind of sit around for 20 minutes doing nothing. Uh, that's We're not running that category here today. Mm, okay, I've brought up the map because that pauses Bambalo's movement. Yeah, not enough space. Bambalo's hitbox is very big. Too big, frankly. Rude. Uh, while you do take the helicopter, a couple things that you mentioned is uh, one thing when you're watching Punchy here do the combat, uh, you do notice there's a little dodge. Uh, it's going to come especially in handy later when oh, it's my. going to Turn lead around. into certain types of fights. Uh, as well, um, Erico is unique. Uh, I think Punchy explains a little bit better than I can right here, but 
enemy our characters in this game have like a knockdown animation that's much longer than Eriko because Eriko is like super awesome at being good at not being afraid of things. Move! Uh, well, wait, this is guy he just is like coming down the middle? <laughs> hey, oh move! God. Thank you. Get out of the way, bro. <laughs> but yeah, Eriko is really good at just not being stunned forever whenever she gets scared. Other characters like panic for like ten seconds. Yes. When Erika gets into a fight, she gets back up again immediately. Okay, now this is a fight I can actually win. But the way to win this fight is you kind of need to complete your combo and then sort of like do a little micro step forward so that you stay near his shoulder so that he like tries to shoot fire at you, but it kind of just barely misses you. The positioning is difficult to maintain and sometimes the AI will do that. Like, where are you going, bro? I'm on fire again. That is inconvenient. There we go, got him. Good fight. And then Bambolo seemingly burns to death. There's Kevin! Kevin will now be coming with us in a series of slightly too long cutscenes where he wakes up and basically goes, Wow, that was weird. I don't need that. That's the thing that will stop you from getting uh, like knocked on your butt for 5,000 years whenever you uh, get into a fight with a character who's not Eriko. Eriko doesn't need it. And also, there's no fights past this point, so I don't know why they give it to you. Anyway, now that we've arrived at the top here, uh, I will present with absolutely no context, there is now a large Banvalo chasing us. This also just occurs. So whenever he slams down like this, I'm pressing the dodge button, right? Which does a little... Erica like, kind of makes a short step to the side and goes, shoot! Uh, it doesn't look like it be very effective as a dodge, but the thing is, the dodge is incredibly invincible. Like, it's not really a dodge, it's just kind of on demand, this doesn't hit me, no. I reject that. Uh, it raises your heart rate slightly, though. For Eriko, you, it raises it by two. Other characters' dodges raise it more, which is sort of the primary advantage of playing as Eriko. Eriko has all the benefits, she's the protagonist, she gets all the good stuff. Also, a lot of people like to wonder, oh, why don't you just run in the water? Uh, you don't. Uh, it just makes you just really slow. So Punchy kind of has to walk slow. on those planks and pop around and platform. And it's a long section of platforming. So we got to the control room. This guy's having a great time controlling the <laughs> giant robot that's trying to kill us. So Eriko is understandably a bit frustrated with this person and decides the only course of action here is murder. Meet his son. I've murdered a park employee, but it turns out it's a- Whoa! Did- Did you hit the, uh... No? Hey, Max, you wanna say the thing? <laughs> uh, uh, mm-hmm. Cause I don't think uh, that's ever happened before. I don't think that's happened, yeah. Well, uh... My game just crashed to BIOS. <laughs> I don't think I have a save for stage two, unfortunately. Now you have three, four, five. I've got three, four, five, but I don't think I've got two. Is that the end of stage one? Uh. Let me check my other VMU real quick. Oh, God. Oh, the back of VMU. Bro! It crashed to BIOS! Don't make that noise. I just want to note, uh, when we were setting this up, his other disc was growling at him. Oh, I'm having a nightmare. That's the start of the game, that's not going to help. Oh, this is bad. You know, we're not too far into the run. Doing all right. I think I don't have a choice other than to take it from the top, sadly. Oh, that's tragic. All right, everyone, forget everything we just told you. I've started again. Oh no, I w okay. I feel bad about that, but in my defense, I don't think any runner would be expecting their game to suddenly crash to the BIOS prompt. Yeah, uh, doesn't happen every day. Uh, I guess my colleague just comment that she has $3,000 lying around in her pocket going to a theme park. That's a nightmare scenario. Right, well, let's try again, I suppose. 
It's a fresh run. It just, we just began, right? Uh, if anyone uh, doesn't know Illbly, this is a game where all your friends have been uh, lost in a theme park to win, like, what? A billion dollars? A uh, hundred? I don't remember the amount of money. And 100 we're... mil... The number varies between the spoken language and the subtitles. Really? Yeah, it's it's the, like... What? It's one hundred million dollars in spoken, but sometimes it's one million in the subtitles. Sometimes I don't know; it varies. They could, it, the, the number isn't consistent between various iterations. <laughs> That's a very large difference. They'd be like confused by the like yen to dollar conversion. <laughs> yeah. Zeros. It's something like that. But also, uh, a burger costs like a thousand dollars at a theme park. <laughs> oh God! You know, it's just like a real theme park. In all honesty. Okay well, pa okay, well, this is now Pat and A. Difference between... <laughs> oh, yeah, so we can actually uh, look at the differences of patterns right now. Uh, yeah, this is a different the... RNG save. We have got, we've gained a different pattern. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things about this game is that Punchy spent a lot of time routing uh, three different patterns per level, I think. And yep. um, we're we'll actually to see a very unique difference here uh, entirely, uh, you know, for just, just because we want to show you the unique difference. Um, but last time was pattern C, which had certain dodges. This time we're getting other dodges, like the bleeding shower head. That I get hit by that on purpose because it honestly takes too long to avoid. On pattern A, that's what I've yeah. deduced is, is the best plan of action there. You know, the more I think about it, I wonder if playing out the cutscene led to the, like, this crashing. I hope not. I, I'm i honestly a bit scrambled from that, I'm not going to lie. I'm, try uh, I mean, I'm trying I'm to contain it, I'm trying to contain it for the sake of the show, but that is, I am having the worst time of my life right now. That, oh well, no. I'll tell you what, if you need a little downtime, I could read a few donations. We've had an awful lot come in for you, my friend. <laughs> Please do, I've had stress dreams about this kind of thing. All right, well, let's start with this one then from Marcy Bones for $300. He says, go, Punchy, I believe in you. Thanks. I have another donation here from Ember for $200. He says, good luck, Punchy. It's totally worth torpedoing my sleep to watch the notorious Kevin uh, Strats. <laughs> Kevin, we'll, we will get to Kevin Strats eventually, I promise. It will occur. It just might take longer than I thought. I have a donation from Fairy Fun for $5. It says, I set an alarm, so I'd be sure to catch Punchy's cool ill bleeder run. And I have a $25 donation here from Dex. It says, well, I'm willingly awake at 4 a.m. in order to watch ill bleed. I'm too old to be up with you youngsters. My stepmom has been wrestling with some very aggressive breast cancer for the past couple of years. And although she wouldn't understand this event, I'm damn sure she'd appreciate it. Let's get that Shadow of Rose incentive met. And that, of course, is a reference to the uh, the Resident Evil Village Shadow of Rose DLC incentive. We are sitting at, oh, let me actually make sure I'm checking the correct place before I tell y'all where we're sitting. We are sitting at $4,701 out of the $90,000 we're looking to unlock that. That's the, that's the uh, bonus game three. That's what we're looking to unlock. I have more donos if you have more time. Go for it. Yes, please. Go for it. <laughs> We've got a little bit here. All right, Kona Regan sent in $25. Says, donating for the run, I've been recommending people to tune in to watch since I learned it would be at this event. Good luck with the run, Punchy. Thanks. I got smacked by that. Nice. I've got a $15 donation here from Minty Roots. It says, Ill Bleed is a game I've loved for the longest time now, and I'm extremely excited to see how this game will be broken. Much love to everyone, and have an amazing GDQ. Less than three. The game is breaking, just not in a way that's favorable to me. <laughs> having a moment here, having a time. We're struggling through it, though. Pattern A plays I, out a little bit differently, but it plays out pretty similarly to C past a certain point, so we're kind of uh, repeating the motions. This guy isn't paying attention. Combat's a funny thing, because you mostly don't engage in it in this game. Dude. Dick. That was an interesting hit. That got me from miles out. Yeah, that Isn't door. there some, um, some reward if you actually do win the combat? You get adrenaline for it. 
to refill your like trap detection, which I don't need because I know where all them are because I did all the research regarding it. Regarding the like the three different patterns per level, that is a, a process that took me about two and a half weeks of my real life, just constantly repeating levels and like retrying different configurations to map all of them out. Because it's not like listed in like a guide or anything. I had to map that manually. Yeah, you did that on stream too. I did. So it's really it was, make it interesting. Yeah, no, it was it was uh it was a time. It was actually pretty pretty cool to see all that. Hey, Let's see if I can do the strap better this time. Hey, now this works is that I can dodge through fire and then position him such. Yeah, just about to sneak and escape just before he turns around. It's a better version of that. Alright, now we're back in the tunnels. Uh... Back in the labyrinth. Erika's head will kind of point to look at uh, Anbelo as he tries to run by, so you can sort of figure out when he spawns in. Because he appears in generally fixed locations, like this isn't random. We need to pause the game here. Map Bringing up the map will pause enemy movement in its place, which can generally give you enough space to move through spaces like that. That was That might have looked like I wasn't close to touching him, I definitely was. That was like just barely enough space to work with. He's got a much bigger hitbox than he looks. That uh, pause tech as well is going to come especially in handy in later levels because we're going to be having similar um, strats to be done. Yep. And Kevin's being dragged away again. Okay, he came around the corner in a weird way and scared me. Paused on instinct. Works for bailing out of situations that you don't know how to deal with as well. Andy trick like that. Just in case, I think there's a save right before the boss fight, right? Yes. Let's do that. Let's do that. I agree. It's it's good. Well, first things first. Safety this... saves. Let's go. Yep. Hey, hurry up! I have a bunch of safety saves for problematic points, but not for game unceremoniously crashing in the first <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> I mean, I, it kind of goes to show that, like, you have, what, you have, like, four VMUs all with yeah, saves, and I, there's I, only three I, save I, slots in the whole game, and you still don't have I'm enough for it. It's ridiculous. You, runner, come on. I prepare well. Just only three? Like, my, my preparation doesn't account for acts of God. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to have, you know, a really spectacular this has never happened before. Unbelievable. Just for GDQ. What even causes a Dreamcast game to crash to BIOS? <laughs> I've never seen that before, I'm what not gonna lie. Earth? That's why I was so shocked. I, I was lost for words because my Dreamcast has never done that before. No, who's ha uh, Okay, whatever. I'm who's now. has? Who <laughs> <laughs> has now? Okay, that went a lot better this time. That was a much smoother fight. I stuck to his I stuck to the diagonal very cleanly. Come with me, Kevin. We have much time to make up now. Alright, back at it again. This jumping is as awkward as it looks, for the record. Like, if you look at this and think, wow, Ubli doesn't look like much of a platformer. Yep. You press jump, the jump occurs about, mm, I don't know, like a second later. No, I can't believe they programmed in, like, a representation of God attacking your Dreamcast in the game right now. <laughs> I'm so cursed when it comes to Dreamcasts. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't even see Dreamcast. Like, didn't this happen for, like, Origins or, like, a, uh, what, PS TV? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that, that's yeah. also a game that randomly will crash the P... Where are you going? That He's is also a game best. that will crash the PS TV to its, uh, the dashboard if you play it for too long in one setting. <laughs> I don't know why I have okay. here, though. Okay. I've been playing okay. the game for that long. Alright, please don't crash coming out of this again, or I'm going to cry live on stream. Well, this time I get to do my terrible pun, because okay. instead of I'll I bleed, killed the park employee, he'll bleed. he's dead, I've stolen his ID card, I'm leaving this level. <laughs> the 
park employee was a robot, though, so it turns out it's not actually murder, even though Erico absolutely intended to kill a human being. We're just not going to discuss that. <laughs> She's, she's a she She absolutely got mad and tried to kill a person, and then it turned out it was a robot, <laughs> so actually it's okay, but she absolutely thought it was a person. That person was trying to, like, what? Have a demon attack her? Something like that. But it's, <laughs> a, it's a giant robot, and she, like, walks into the control room and complains, you know, they're trying to kill me, and he goes, it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> Time Just... for an ethics discussion. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> We're in murder park. So it's not even the weirdest thing this game does. <laughs> not even close. Not like, this, even close, We, will, we yeah. will go places by the end of this, I assure you. Oh, it's going to get so much more. We haven't even begun to scrape the uh, weirdness that is ill bleed. Uh, even, uh, I don't even know, are, are you going to talk about that one storyline later? Because that one's... Uh, I think I'm going to try and gloss that over, because that honestly might be a bit much. Well, we're not going to talk about every detail, but we'll, 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 we'll at least kind of go over the gist of it. Oh, dear. If you know, you know. Anyway, I'm reaching the end of the first level. <laughs> That's stage one completed. It crashed right at the end of the level. Uh, anyway, at the end of the... Sorry, my earbuds are falling out a bit here. At the end of a level, you get a prize pool based on how well you did, but honestly, the game showers you with so much money that you don't really know what to do with it anyway. And now we can move on to stage two, where we're going to change characters for the first time, because this game has multiple characters. And although I spent most of the uh, the first level like extolling the virtues of playing as Erico, uh, other characters do have some merit, although they really only have two specific merits. But it turns out those merits are very meritful in run context. In casual play, it's pretty negligible. Anyway, this is Revenge of the Queen Worm. It is a Tremors reference. That is the Duke. Also, generally mean thing with Illbleed, if I remember correctly, every time you beat a level, it throws out every item you had in the previous level. Yep, you can't bring them with you. This is Kevin. Kevin has generally average stats. We will get into why Kevin is the choice for this level when it becomes relevant, but it does. There are, pro there are properties between... It's not so much Kevin specifically, it's the fact he's a guy. So, like, all of the, the, the male characters in this game share the same set of animations, and that's where the key lies. It's also, he's his just his like run me. is so goofy. It's very weird. Look at his right leg. That's how legs work. <laughs> that's not, I don't believe you. He's just like me. <laughs> Right, so all of that stuff I, uh, in the first level about tagging traps and using your senses to detect them or whatever, all that goes in the bin for this level. Doesn't come up. Ignore it. It's no longer relevant. Uh, instead, I'm going to avoid enemy encounters by positioning myself against the left wall here. That avoids an enemy encounter with a group of monkeys. So the, the gimmick of this level is that it's just enemy encounters, so the horror monitor isn't useful to us here. We don't need to tag anything. The screen is shaking. That means one of the, like burrowing worms is behind me. If I play my cards correctly and I move the right way, I shouldn't ever get into a fight with one, but that is not necessarily 100% up to me. There is a random component to this. Sometimes you get very unfavorable patterns. And you do not want to get into a fight with Kevin, because as Dice has explained in the first level, when a character other than Erico gets into a fight, they kind of do like a shuffle around on their butt for like 10 seconds before they get back up. And I'm now playing as a non Erico character, so I would like to not have to experience that. That would be slow. Oh yeah, a really weird thing about Illbleed is uh, you're not going to notice in the run because Punchy's not really going to be doing because he doesn't need to, but you can buy like stat upgrades, if I remember correctly. Like, you can buff yep. up the characters by like a wild am amount. It's actually an RPG. Yep, there's, there's RPG elements in this game. We by and large gloss over that completely in the speedrun because it's just not necessary. It, it improves things like your health pool, your resistance to bleeding, your resistance to being scared. But uh, you can't buff things like attack damage, which would be the actually useful thing. So we ignore it. I can get by just fine with basic health. So I evaded another encounter there by sticking to the hard right wall. Once again, evading combat at every opportunity. This last dodge here, this is the last dodge of the level. And this last dodge is heavily dependent on what kind of pattern you get. I see you. 
There you go, thank you very much. We pass on the right side and Kevin gets through without getting into any fights. Now we go to the drive-in cinema theatre. Check out this graffiti on the wall. It says, too late, too tired, the bad artist. Mood. Anyway, this is why Kevin good. Check out these hops. Kevin jumps faster than girls. I don't know why. But he does. It's like, it's a mo capped game. I don't think they specifically sat down and went, the men should jump better. It just happens that the animation that they had for this is just quicker. So, uh, on platforming segments, of which the stage has a fair bit of, uh, Kevin works out quicker. I can't believe the mocap artist for Kevin knew in 20 years to be running this game at a GDQ and specifically jumped faster than Erico. Just a little bit. It's it's not even a very large time save, but it is like an amount. Oh, also, we picked up a baby bottle to appease the ghost of a convenience store so I could go inside and steal a key. I, I very much glossed over that detail. This will come up again later. So our goal, there's a giant worm lurking in the uh, the drive-in theater there. If you touch the, the soil, it starts a fight with it that we can't currently win because it has infinite health. Our goal is to kill that worm. That worm's name is Rachel. It has a name. It's raised as a daughter by a strange old man. But then he asks us to kill. Like, his ghost asks us to kill his worm daughter because she's too big. She's, she's eating people now, so I gotta knock down billboards to get to the to fuel. There's fuel on the other side of it. It'll be fuel for my flamethrower. I'm going to burn it to death. So as one of the last level flamethrowers make people bleed, do worms bleed? Apparently. Huh. Must knock down a series of billboards. The way to know which ones to knock down is that you just kind of know which ones you need to knock down. It'll kind of look the same. But the ones you need to knock down will give you a prompt to do so. And is I guess they a, won't be fenced in. Is there a penalty for knocking down the wrong one? Nope. I just want to let you do it. Ah. You can't knock down the wrong one. Welcome to Drive Theatre. Right, so this is where Kevin hops. Specifically this platforming segment, and again, if I if I touch the soil, uh, it will start a fight, which is bad. Kevin's jump is actually so fast it can be kind of hard to control, and Illbleed isn't the greatest platformer at the best of times. So turn the camera quite carefully. Okay. Now let's kill Rachel. So the way this boss fight works is we would like to get Rachel stuck in a pattern. That's a counter hit animation, that's good. This game has counter hits by the way, it's a fighting game. We would like to get Rachel stuck in a pattern of trying to attack me, like that, and then we get a counter hit. And then we could take this sort of distance, they try to attack again, we go for a counter hit, we get the counter hit. We repeat the loop. Nope. Wrong move. Hit the dive. Wow, rude. Dodge that probably would have hit me otherwise. Didn't get a counter hit off that. They simply rose up. They did not try to attack me. They have to specifically try to attack you, like that. That's counter hit. Counter hit state good. Counter hit do more damage. I'm here. I'm here again. No! Rachel! What are you there we go? Thank you, Rachel. Do I at least get the fast death animation for that? No, we've gone back underground. Either way, Rachel is dead. We have excised Rachel's soul. There it goes. <laughs> and... Rachel! Enter the ghost of Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> You She's, he looks ecstatic about this. Oh, that's a relief. At last, we can be together forever. Let's go back to hell. 
Hey, you young one. So Rachel has a body. Why doesn't he have a body? Great. I like to say, let's go back to hell. Hey, young one. Thank you. They go back to hell together. They're happy in the afterlife. Good for them. Love that for them. And that's stage two. <laughs> Yeah, we, we told you this this game would get weird. It's getting weird. And it will only get weird. Getting weird. <laughs> it's already okay. been pretty weird. It's it's a relentlessly strange game that constantly changes the scenario. Which makes it very hard to explain, honestly. Well, it has even weirder things too. Uh, one, one weird mechanic that, that you know—it's kind of, I guess, funny that you can do it. Is you may have noticed in the shop there's like an erotic magazine for thirty dollars. Yeah, my yeah. band just costs like seven hundred and fifty dollars, but the erotic magazine costs thirty dollars. Remember correctly, it raises your heart rate to buy it, which I guess is good if you're like bleeding, because it'll make it make yeah. you bleed less. But the, can't you just like buy like a bunch of them and just like die by reading dirty magazines until like? Yep. I guess you get a heart attack. Yep. The, the, the erotic magazine exists for the very niche purpose. If you're bleeding out a lot, uh, your heart rate starts to decline, and if your heart rate hits zero, you flatline. This is very rare and will basically not happen unless you're trying, but in that very niche scenario where you're about to flatline, you can prevent yourself from dying by reading an erotic magazine. Immersive sim stuff, you know. Anyway, this is Wood Puppets moving on. <laughs> Moving swiftly do? on before I get yelled at by production. <laughs> All right, well, we're back on Erico, by the way. We're back on Erico because we need to do like physical combat in this level, and uh, the character differences are such that men swing swing axes very slowly, but the uh, the women characters swing it very quickly. Who who going to cut the tree? Going to cut the tree, and I got to cut the tree because I love to cut the tree. Yo ho ho, and I'm out of control. I'm gonna cut the tree. And he was gonna cut the tree. I would like this axe. Thank you. Anyway, I'm on pattern C. I neglected to mention it because we were too busy doing that. I'm on pattern C. I identified what pattern I was on from the opening hallway. Uh, it's the position of the saw blades in the first room that is the giveaway for what pattern I'm on. So now I know where all this is. There's just a trap in the ceiling, which I think is very mean, because you don't you don't really think to look up there. That is quite cheeky. Oh, didn't quite tag it. Try again. There you go. Also, I can't remember if we actually talked about it, but casually, you're not really allowed to consistently tag everything. Every time you tag, it does use that adrenaline meter. A punchy is going to be good here because, you know, he knows what to do, and every time you do it right, you get some back. But if you keep yeah. getting it wrong, what happens is eventually you just can't tag things anymore, and then you're going to be hit by the traps. Yes. So, see, I got pretty much all of it back there because I spent it where I knew it was viable. It seems like I tagged a lot of things I didn't need to. That's because there are so many so close together that it's actually very hard to hit the ones in particular that you want. So uh, I've adopted the survival strategy of just tag everything within that radius, it'll work. Because some traps are unavoidable, like you can snake the line around a lot of them, but not all of them. Some of them are just very, very big. There was a cutscene there of a vine coming down. We're going to cut the tree. Yeah, so the story of the Wood Puppets level is that it's a lumber mill, but like, people are dying in it because the trees eat people. And also the lumberjacks also try to kill people. It, you know, just evil trees and lumberjacks and stuff. I'm going to just take this guy's wood. It's my wood now. <laughs> He's annoyed. I took his wood. He wants it back. You can't have it, though. It's mine. I'm stuck in a corner. He worked so hard for that. Was he sleeping? Did he just, like, not... <laughs> okay, so in order to win combat here, see, Eriko's swing is better. Well, he died real fast. So... Regular combat in this game is weird. You can only kill regular enemies with a counter hit. Like, I wasn't joking about the fighting game thing, you must keep these principles in mind. Regular enemies, you can deplete their health bar with regular attacks, but you can't kill them unless it's counter hit. Has to be counter hit. So you need to get them to attack you and then, like, knock them out of it, which is unfortunate because it's also a little random. Like, sometimes the counter hit just doesn't work properly for some reason. It's not a consistent process. But that went pretty well. It's my wood now. He can't have it. 
Uh, my friend's brain is inside that room. I'm not going to pick it up. <laughs> it's less important than wood. Yeah, because one of our one of our friends is currently a, uh, one of these wood puppet dudes. I'm not one of our lie. friends is currently one of these wood puppets. I think that's the same uh, exact way I get into fights. Just spin around and hope the best. A T pose to <laughs> assert dominance. <laughs> I need to escape. <laughs> that fight only happens on patency. It's an exclusive feature of this particular generation. I mean, it works for Zangief, so. Okay, we use the wood here because it unlocks the control panel. This is one of the very few regional differences in this game, gameplay wise. This code is different in Japanese because it's a word pun. So they changed it in English because it doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, we're a wood puppet now. We're a wood puppet now. It's implied the machine kind of like, like when we're not, we are the wood puppet. Like we're not controlling it. We've been turned into one. Somehow, the fit. Like, don't worry about the the, the mechanics of the situation. Do we but still have our brain? We have our brain. Randy does. Yeah. Randy lost his. Randy lost his brain, and he's not getting it back. Actually, Randy will die. We're not going to save him at all. But I just wanted to note that, like, you can pick up your friend's brain there in the room, and if you miss it, you get a brainless version of your friend who can't tag traps at all. It's like a comedy character. <laughs> he has no adrenaline. He has no brain gauge to work with at all, uh, which makes him funny, but basically useless, because he'll just get hit by everything. <laughs> the mechanic... So, so what happens to the meter at the top? Is it just gone, or...? It's still there. So the bottom you can left. Get a graphic <laughs> demonstration of how much you could be doing if you could use that mechanic of the game, but you can't. <laughs> so in short, grabbing Randy would be a mistake. Yes. Brainless Randy would not do us any good. Anyway, now we're entering the Woodman Hunting Contest. We are the Woodman. The Lumberjacks are going to hunt us that we need to go through here to get to the end of the level. So that's what we're doing. This Thus begins another chase-type section where enemies will appear in the game world, and if they touch us, it initiates a fight. Only, uh, wood puppets can't run particularly fast, and they also can't escape combat. So if we get into combat, we have to win it. Thus making it, uh, not fast, my sources are saying. Generally, the intent here of the game is to make you do a lot of combat, because the Lumberjacks run a lot faster than you do. Now, with any luck, I might be able to despawn the first guy with the right kind of... No, I can hear him clonking away back there. Hello. So we're going to instead abuse map pausing. I use this a little bit in stage one, but here is where it gets the most use. Every time you bring up the map, it pauses the enemies in their place. So I can use that to make a, an escape without having to fight them instead. It is a bit jarring. I have to pay attention to the audio for this one because I can't really see them behind me naturally. I do it based on the sound of their footsteps. Sometimes you get lucky here as well when their AI just kind of gets stuck <laughs> on walls and stuff. Like that, his AI got stuck. I flinched, I thought he spawned. I flinched because I heard my disk drive make a noise. Which, oh, no. frankly, is a noise that now terrifies me. It just needs to last, like, what? Maybe, like, 40 more minutes Please, please, please pray for my Dreamcast to get through this speedrun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Adding we... an extra dimension of horror to this horror game. <laughs> Will my hardware survive the run? Anyway, oh, we've got to the midway point of the wood puppet chase. We've escaped the lumberjacks for now. We're going to pick up a wood-eating parasite with our wooden body. Uh, they don't <laughs> eat us, though. Well, yeah, it's a it's different type of wood. Like, literally, the Japanese, there is a wood-eating bug. And it's like, but we're wood? It doesn't seem to phase them, though. We need it to get rid of this tree. Called Woodola. That's the name of the bug, apparently. I don't think that's a real thing. I think they might have made that one up. Maybe we're like bad tasting wood. Possibly. We do have blood on us. Do termites eat blood? This is not a landing tree I enjoy. 
You know, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I've been asking a lot of bugs and blood during this run, because there's just so- I mean, it's, it's called the ill bleed. It's ill bleed. It's a lot of blood-related content in this game. I mean, I it's don't imagine termites would be interested in that. Yes, ill bleed. The, the game <laughs> where uh, you think about what wood tastes like. Yes, indeed. But also, do trees bleed? That feels like more of a philosophical <laughs> question. That's like, they bleed sap? But is that blood? The, now we are getting philosophical here. Right? I suppose. It's the blood of the tree. If you're asking if it's an equivalent to human blood, it's certainly not a chemical one. I suppose. Anyway, back to being attacked. <laughs> I'm going to try to More get this guy things. to fall off a cliff. No, not quite. If you're lucky, though, with how wide the guy takes his line, he can fall off the map here, and thus, you know, we'll stop bothering you for the time being. I am not so fortunate, so I must pay attention to the way. Hello there, big man. All right, I always pause here. Ooh, almost, almost did not get that out. So, like, when you walk down that ramp real quick, you briefly pop into the air, and while the game considers you airborne, you can't open the map. So, like, sometimes you go to press it and you don't get map, and you're like, huh? But no, it is because airborne state. Very slight, very minor detail. Go away! I'm just not that into you. <laughs> Congrats, y'all, on making chat get philosophical, by the way. Oh, trees Good. have. Good. <laughs> Man, he is sticking to me. Oh, now his AI takes a break? Okay. Okay, I see how it is. I see how it is. I understand the situation. Right, we've made it to the goal. We've made it to the goal. We are safe from lumberjack attacks. Except we haven't. They're cheating. They're hiding in the goal room. These fights are mandatory. I am now going to T-pose to assert dominance. <laughs> Die! <laughs> Once again, I still need a counter hit to win. But uh, T-posing is the best damage, easily, of the Woodman attacks. Because you can move while you do it, too, so you can evade and everything. Right. So, so to make you all ask, I think of a question really quick. Is the tree body really sharp, or are the Lumberjacks really brittle? That's a lot of blood being lost from, like, grazing them. I don't know, like, every hit in this game makes everything explode into a fountain of blood. <laughs> I think everyone's just got a lot of blood in them in this game. Which I would say the fact that the main character manages to keep that skirt white throughout all of these fights is the real magic of the run. Ooh, dash attack. Maybe people, maybe people just bled more in the 90s. I don't know. Why am I standing still? That doesn't help. Oh, man, it is a fighting game, moves. right? So That guy put on the moves. He knew the frame data. Yeah, they can be rough if they uh, if they give you a hard time with their big moves, rather than just sort of letting you smack them around a bunch. I want to get health back with using my ramen. Thank you very much. There we go. Okay, now we have cleared the Woodman hunting game, and we can turn back to normal using this machine. Makes a series of very loud noises, and boom, we're Eriko again. Uh, we do this simply to clear this tiny jump. That's it, that's the only reason. Woodmen can't jump. Oh. And now we're Can going only to fight <laughs> a large tree with a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I this position tree. myself in the corner, dodge straight through it. If I get the swing attack there, I'm able to get a full combo. A one, two, three punch, like so. If you're playing as a male character, they actually do not have time to do a three-hit attack. It will simply, like, take too long and then they'll get hit. So we want this swing attack as much as possible. This is very nice. This is very nice. Yes. I like that. Oh, cancelled it too early. You can cancel dodges into attacks, which is a, a key way to mess yourself up by attempting to, like, mash attack too quickly after dodging and getting hit while you're already inside a hitbox. So you should let your dodges complete. Anyway, this final hallway here exists for the sheer purpose of killing you if you happen to be bleeding a lot by the end of the level. It's very cruel. They put this here just to kill you right at the end if you don't, like, pass the boss with flying colors. Because bleeding racks up as you run. 
But okay, that's stage three completed. That's also the philosophical part of the speedrun completed. Thank what? God. I don't know. I feel like this game kind of just <laughs> keeps asking the questions. Like, why would they develop such a long hallway to bully the player? This game comes from that era of game design where they would do things to be, like, mean, but in, like, a funny way. It's like when a friend is rude to you, you know? Yeah. Free Kaizo Kaizo. Mercifully, this game is not actually like that difficult overall. It showers you with resources, but it's it's also like a matter of gaining the power to read the intentions of, of its creators. Anyway, stage four, the killer department store. This stage, once again, works completely differently because it gives you the money that you would normally get for clearing the stage up front. But every time you get hit by a trap, they'll steal money instead of health. And sometimes both, actually. And we need a certain amount of money to finish the level. So we would like to lo not lose too much money. Although realistically, I have lots of money, so I will be fine. Okay, since it's the trolley, I got, it's called a trolley in the UK. Please do not question me on that. Uh, since it's trolley, that's pattern B. That is the earliest and most obvious sign of what pattern I'm on. I'm just saying, you immediately said lot, we won't have more philosophical questions and you immediately hit us with the trolley problem. <laughs> Different kind <What>? of trolley. <laughs> That's a different kind of trolley. <laughs> cool. Anyway, I know what traps I'm on. The blue candy is one of them. Cool. I should now be able to avoid damage here by hugging this wall. Yep, very good. Avoid encounter here by hugging the right wall. And I tag pink in the middle and purple ceiling. That's how I remember it in my brain. Cool. Pink floor, purple ceiling. Then it's purple floor, again. And the orange face on the wall in the back. You gotta keep three patterns in your brain when running this game at any given, be able to like sort of summon the muscle memory at any time when you identify which one you're on. And there, are, there is like fast patterns and slow patterns, like some are definitely better than others. As I, um... Oh, god. There was definitely, like, a, a winners in terms of, like, fast patterns and slow patterns, but for quite a few stages, it's not that different, so you don't, you know, you're not, like, rolling for perfect luck. You just kind of have to know how to play all three. Anyway, here's Hellcake. I'm going to give him a severed head. He wants a decoration. You can pick up a strawberry. He doesn't want that. He wants the severed head. And as a reward for this, Hellcake can come with us! We have gained Hellcake. Oh. Wait, was the head smiling when he was on the cake? Well, yep. Yeah, he's beautiful. He was not smiling before, so that... Nope. <laughs> he was on a hell cake before. That's true. He's very happy to become cake. Uh, here, uh, here, Punch will be grabbing uh, three chickens. Uh, he's going to need these for an upcoming puzzle. Uh, you need, I'm pretty sure, exactly three. Technically, you can get away with less, but RNG dictates you want three because it's the most optimal number um, all results. Which we'll see at the end of this section. But anyway, going to the it's question a, It's to a ask, random. Um, so it there's two cockroaches at the end of this hallway, and every time you give them a me, there's a thirty percent chance they go away. But you want to finish with at least one in your possession. So what I do is, if you're going for the most optimal RNG, which I'm currently doing because I don't feel like running the numbers, uh, you give them one each, and if they don't immediately go away, you just refuse to give them more, and then they smack you and you bleed everywhere. That is a terrifyingly large bug. Oh, that one went away. <laughs> That's good. That'll do. So and now I have one remaining, and the, the remaining meat in your inventory is what you fight in this area. This is why you want to finish with one, because you can finish off the last guy very quickly. If you come in this fight with a lot of meat, this becomes a, a giant mess. I don't know why that guy just makes you fight your meat. Like, you walk in and he's like, oh, you know, if you want to you wanna eat, you, sh you know, like, bring your own meat. And then you do, and he's like, hey, you gotta you know, catch it yourself, and then it, tr it tries to kill you. It's, it, just, it, just, it just develops that way, and it's never discussed again. It's not like a major part of the level, it's just a thing that happens. Just one of many things that happens. Are these onions, or are these pumpkins? Discuss. 
Mm. Those are huge onions if they're onions. Oh, like, I'm pumpkin. thinking they're pumpkins. Yeah, that looks like pumpkin to me. Oh, wait, the top? Oh, I think they're onions. See, see, in my notes, I've no, I've got them noted down as onion. Well, it says fresh vegetables. Are pumpkins a vegetable? I thought they're like a gourd. Now, that, I am not interested in the taxonomy of that. I just want to know if they're onions or not. Well, that's, I'm pretty sure they're onions in that case. Why do they have pumpkins in the vegetable aisle? Oh, uh, mm, right, yes, yes. Okay, now I see. What's a vegetable? Oh, that is a pineapple right there, isn't it? <laughs> I'm hearing <laughs> someone Googling. <laughs> what? Who's talking? Hey, look, look, hey, look, I gotta know, okay? Hold on, hold on. It doesn't matter. That's a pineapple. Pineapple's not a vegetable. It's a fruit. That's, that, that is definitely a pineapple. So I guess it doesn't no, no, matter no, they, anyway. They, they're, 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 pu pumpkins are technically vegetables. But there's a pineapple. A pineapple is, it, it, is it in the vegetable section? Would you section? eat it on pizza, yes. yes or no? Would I eat pumpkin on pizza? I don't think I've ever had pumpkin pizza. Oh, pineapple also, on uh, pizza. Speed run time. Uh, we have like, uh, the worms are back, and this time they're meaner. You have to get counter this is, and all This is the hardest fight in the game, bar none. Yep. I hate this. You gotta fight three of them. And once again, the counter hit rule is in effect. I need a counter hit on all three after depleting their health bars to kill. But whether or not they attempt to attack me is not something I have great control over, and they often like to cover for each other. They're great powers like that. See, that's a counter hit. That might kill, actually. No, wrong guy. Ouch. See, that's that's their bud covering for each other, being a pain. They spawn in unfortunate configurations. This becomes very messy in a hurry. And honestly, the camera doesn't really aid you with this. That's one down. That's a good start. <laughs> that, yes. Counter hit. Oh, wow. That was a total accident, but that worked out really well. That yeah, was a sick combo. I got two with one swing. Good fight. I'll take it. That can go really wrong to point where, like, you die. But uh, that went very well. I'm very pleased with that. That's one of like the content. That's one of like the uh, the risky points of the run, where things go pear shaped. Anyway, forgetting about that now. Moving swift. You can only look forward in Illbleed, never backwards. You must enter Kids World. We need a hundred thousand dollars to enter. No, it's two hundred thousand actually. Either way, I'm very rich, so I don't have a problem with that. I'm in Kids World now. I can buy all of the Dreamcasts. There literally are Dreamcasts around here. They will try to eat you. How much do they cost? Yes, they do. So the way I approach this segment is I stick to the right wall and tag things as is necessary. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I think these toys are saying they're like, I see 9,000 for a top hat, I think I saw 50k for another one. So not only are you dropping it's, the $200,000 to get into Kids World, you're then dropping another 10k on a hat. It's definitely the yen to dollars thing. It is definitely like the yen to dollars thing, like, it, it's listed as dollars, it's yen. It's also a very large hat, so you're getting a lot, you know. You're getting a lot of hat. You buy a hat for ten thousand dollars. Figure out what this is on the right. Was this like a model kit or something? Was that like a gunpla? Yep. Like, yep. <laughs> That's a dream cost. This dream cost will eat me if I don't tag it. No. <laughs> Does that make it more valuable or less valuable? The dream cost? Yeah. I saw it says sixteen thousand dollars. Like, I mean, you're paying for that. It does eat you, or just like it's there. Absolutely, the end thing. Yeah. Does that- hang on, I've just noticed this. This really just does say <laughs> soccer ball. <laughs> the soccer ball. Like, one word. Cool. Um, the, the chances of your dream cars eating that. you are low, but never zero. <laughs> Tried to eat me earlier, clearly. Anyway, we're now going to enter Mary's Maze. She challenges us to a game of not quite hide and seek. She's hidden four keys in the maze. Uh, and we need to find them to escape while she tries to stab us with a large knife. She is refreshingly straightforward as far as killers go. This is the kind of normalcy I think we need. The killer amusement park. Well, yeah, they try to give a lot of villains, like, you know, deep backstories and make you sympathize with them. It's kind of refreshing to have someone she who just, just hates you. Know, you. She just wants to stab hates you. you. She just wants to kill you. Yeah, she's, she's just not very nice. You entered her maze and now you have to die. That's what happened. It's like life. Oh. 
All right. How do y'all feel about some donations? How do y'all feel about that? Yeah, hit it while I finish up the rest of this maze. All right, awesome. I have an anonymous donation for $25. Says, gotta donate for Punchy Run, gotta double donate for Illbly. No other game like it out there, truly. Nothing. <laughs> I gotta agree. I have another anonymous donation for $25. Illbleed is the only game that gave me nightmares as a kid. I know this run is gonna bring those nightmares back. Thanks, Punchy. Not the only one. <laughs> A five dollar donation here from Scrap Panda who says five dollars to start a five dollar train. Punchy is one of my favorite runners. I'm always excited to see him on speed runs from the crypt. The run having to restart just means I get to watch more Punchy. Go Punchy! <laughs> I still feel really bad about that. Oh well. I, I wouldn't feel bad about it at all. You you know you recovered beautifully. I've been enjoying the run immensely. Everything is going. Lovely. <laughs> this woman is about to stab uh, you, right? It's going. One it's definitely the going, here. at least. But yes, we've arrived at the end of the maze. I've got to put all four of my keys in, although they're called cards. Minor thing, if you hold down right trigger while opening the menu, it opens the menu faster. It just it just makes the animation of like the little paper here like flying in. It plays out quicker if you hold down right trigger while you do it. How did you find that? I don't know. I don't remember why I know that. I just do. And now Mary challenges us to actual hide and seek. She's in the fridge. Do not try this at home. But uh, because I know what pattern I'm on, this is also uh, calculated with the, the trap pattern, so she is in the fridge. And she's mad about losing at hide and seek. Now she wants to kill us with a knife. So I'm going Fair. to kill her with a larger knife. I want the knockdown here. Nope. <laughs> funny things happen. The third hit is supposed to give a knockdown, but sometimes ill bleed is funny and doesn't work properly. Where is my knockdown? Come here. Dude, she's just zooming. She's playing neutral. I don't like it. She's gonna be the next Evo. Dude, neither of us can hit each other. This is like... Ow. Her knife is very large and pointy. <laughs> um, oh my god. The Korean backdash is too strong. Okay, I'll take that trade, whatever. It's fine. She's dead. I got it. <laughs> Usually she makes more of an active attempt to hurt you rather than simply uh, prolonging the engagement by not playing the game. But that's okay. I got there in the end. Ideally, you want to get the knockdown and just kind of loop them, but there's only so much you can do where sometimes when you get the hit that causes the knockdown, it just doesn't work. <laughs> that's a thing. It's a thing that can occur. And now for Mary's final challenge, it's a game of jump rope, but not just any game of jump rope. Observe the following. Button press. That's how long it takes to jump. Button press. Button press. Jump. <laughs> it's like half second delayed. It's very... The timing for this is hard to learn as a consequence. When it gets to eight, I actually just mash. Yep. Because that's the most consistent way I found to get through uh, the ninth jump. Jump ten times, we get through. If you fail, uh, blood explodes everywhere. It looks like you've suffered a grievous injury. It does like two damage though, and you just try again. <laughs> it's it's like the most elaborate, like blood geyser hurt animation in the game, but it does like two damage. Here's a spider made of money. His name is Cashman. I'm gonna ignore him. He's got infinite health. Can't you see the top of the screen? No, we must search for an alternative means of fighting him. Cashman. His name is Cashman. Oh, He's yeah. made of cash. Uh, so that employee isn't paying attention. He's like on the phone with his girlfriend. That's not a joke. That's actually a thing that happens in the cutscene. So I'm going to steal the controls. <laughs> By the way, now, uh, in case you're I wondering... Control the spider. I'm going to run it into a wall until it dies. You can attack yourself too, and you immediately die, I think, if you do yep. it. If, if, if you, for some reason, decide to attack yourself with the spider at this point, which I'm not going to do even for, like, ha-ha funny, you will die. Yep. Because it does a lot of damage. It's like, why did you think? It's like the game's going, like, why did you do that? What were you expecting? So don't do that. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I've been buying items between every single level, both for marathon safety and also because uh, some stages it's just very impractical to avoid taking damage. Like, there's a random component to it. If you're very, very confident, you can skip buying items sometimes. Kill a man, everyone's favorite level. Kill a man is a murder mystery. But it will not be Erika who solves this mystery. It will be Kevin. Kevin returns once again. <gasps> this is actually the biggest use of Kevin in the run. Like, I, I, I discovered that Kevin was ideal for this stage when I was doing, like, a Kevin percent run as, like, a joke. I was, I was doing it, like, for fun, and then I hit on an idea, and I was like, actually, this works really well. We'll get to that. First things first, find the horror monitor. There's a dead guy in the control room here, and we're gonna go backstage to report it. This stage takes a very meta tax. Because, like, this is... The whole thing is the attraction, right? It's like, it's the attraction killer man at Illbleed. But we go backstage at the attraction, and someone's dead, and we go like, Hey, someone's dead in the monitor room, and no one else at uh, backstage really seems to care. Like, this just happens all the time. But we, we want to solve the mystery of, like, who's... Who's killing the staff backstage? Because there's a missing, like, killer man costume? So here we see the enemies backstage. Like, they're, they're like models. They're not real. They can't hurt you. Except for when they can, which is often. So this guy's pondering a missing costume. Good luck with that. Whoever stole the missing costume is our killer. Uh, currently we have been mistaken for a part-time employee. So we're going to go loop around the warehouse to get an ID card and also a shotgun. So I must first determine what pattern am I actually on here. Ooh, fancy. Pattern A. Yep. That's not pattern A, that's pattern B. Hang about. Do you know your patterns? Clearly not. Oh yeah, so I wanted to ask earlier, for the patterns, did you like write them down or do you just like keep them in your head? I write them down, I have notes. Okay, thank god. This, this, this would be so much to memorize. Like, no way. Uh, the empty air is my enemy here. Yep. Uh, that trap is actually like the ceiling. But uh, you can't look up that high, so it's just sort of space. It's a rude trap. It's a very rude one. Okay, checking my notes again. I, I definitely have notes open while I'm doing this pretty much all the time because I need to look, look over, quickly look at like the things I've written for a given pattern and go, okay, it's that. I definitely don't have like three variants of every single stage burned into my brain right. with this much precision. Don't expect anyone else to do that either. Notes are good. Always yeah. take notes. We tag that fight. If you tag a fight before getting into it, you won't fall down. Is that the same doll from the last level? Yep, we're backstage. So all of the other ill bleed things are here. Oh. Like that pineapple. The pineapple was there too. It's back! And there's the candy. I took a very specific line there to snake past all the traps. That's actually quite particular. But I know the pattern, so we can make it work. We've gone through that, we pick up our shotgun. Now, while the men swing an axe very slowly, they don't fire guns any slower. So in gun-based combat, they are just as good as the women. It feels weird explaining it that way, but it really is split directly along gender lines in this game. That's, that's, the, that's, how, it, that's how combat works. Anyway, with our newfound ID card, we're going to take a trip back to the monitor room to check up on uh, York, who's investigating the body. So while we walk back, I think you can read a couple donations. Well, that's good. I have quite a few more than a couple of donations. Charbunny sent in $100, says, Stayed up late for this run, and it's so dang worth it. Then again, punchy runs always are. It was a very cute, smiley face. Thank you for being such a fantastic and entertaining runner. Thank you very much. Nick sent in $20 and says, Welcome back to GDQ, Punchy. What happened to Kevin's leg anyway? Did he get caught in a trap? 
Thank you very much. There he is. Still got time for a few more. All right, Mac Mako Shark sent in, excuse me, Mac Mako Shark sent in $10 that had to make part of my donation during Ill Bleed, as I've been absolutely loving watching Punchy speedrun it for a while now. Glad to see the new Kevin Strat in action at the GDQ stage. Shout out to an awesome runner and a spectacular couch. And I have a $150 donation here from an anonymous donor who just says, gotta go fast. Gotta go fast. That's going to age well in a couple levels, I think. It really will. Uh, they do not know. Maybe they do. They don't know. They don't know. Anyway, you know. we made it back to the center. More people have died. So we are now going to investigate further backstage. The back this backstage. Pattern, the backest of stages. With this pattern, this trap has a massive hitbox. I've got to watch out for this one. There we go. Make sure you tag specifically the right part of it. Because, like, this this tunnel consists of, like, actually five different taggable locations. So you got to make sure you get the right one when you're going for it. This is what notes are helpful for. Now, the Killer Man stage consists of a, like, this stage plays out fairly normally for ill bleed purposes. But its main distinction as a stage is that it's very large with lots of points that you can uh, scan, but very few, like, actual traps. Like here, this is this is the one. It's that one. Right. And the rest of these will have nothing on them. And then we can also, this room, also quite wide. Now, depending on pattern, there may be traps on the right side, but because this is pattern B, I am confident that there is nothing here. So you just walk straight on through, despite all the beeps and bloops that our horror monitor is giving us. I have no concern for that. Let's get walk hit, stop. Tag this. Specifically, this patch of floor is the dangerous bit here. All right! All right. I do like the little fist pumps whenever they get a tag correct. They're having a good time. That's a cutscene. Someone else is now dead. Lots of people are dying backstage here at Illbleed. <gasps> Who could have done it? That is the question. As you walk through, we see another cutscene, which I'm going to a bridge, where Killer Man basically fires a giant laser beam at someone. Because it turns out he's got, like, shonen protagonist powers. Like, he's a Dragon Ball character, effectively. That, that's what we're up against. He can fire energy beams, he can quite literally teleport behind you. Does he, does he say nothing personal, kid, after that? He does not. He does not say anything. Oh. Right. We get to the end here, and another person is not quite dead, but injured, and there's a discarded Killer Man costume. That's what he looks like. He's a, he's a dude with a star for a face and on his chest. And climb this ladder back up. And snake our way back out to the main entrance. So, the murder mystery... The murder mystery uh, lands better if you've actually seen all the characters at play, but it's also not really a murder mystery anyway, so don't worry about it. The answer to the murder mystery is stupid. As it is ill bleed. We, we are getting to the list of suspects. This isn't like a gag bit as well. Like the, the game is about to present us with a list of suspects and ask us who do we think is the murderer. But there are a couple of interesting choices on that list. I know I have my guess already locked in. Who is the killer? So we have Killer Man is the killer. Makes sense to me. The player is the killer. Uh, this says abnormality led you to buy this game. That's what that text says. <laughs> I think it's yeah. you. I'm going to vote Killer Man as the killer. That, that I think that's perfectly logical, frankly. You know who's who's Killer Man? It's Killer Man, obviously. Our answer to this question doesn't matter in the slightest, by the way. <laughs> like in the run, it's completely irrelevant. Anyway, now we're in the morgue. The morgue is massive. 
this is apparently just where they keep like it just in one giant pit, which is kind of gross. The morgue is characterized by a lack of music, but they added music to this in the American release, apparently because people kept complaining about there being no music. But for the most part, the morgue is quite large, quite maze-like, and generally devoid of encounters, so this is a perfect place for donations, if you please. Extremely happy to read some donations here, including this one from Pyronic for $5. It says, always happy to donate to a $5 train. Loving the run so far, Punchy. Keep it up with love from Australia. L.O.K. sent in $25 says, I'm a huge Illbleed fan. Hey, Punchy, what Illbleed song is your favorite? Is it the one that's just two random chords that play every five minutes? Is it the one where flute.wave just blorts out every so often? Oh, 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 it's the one that's literally just random machine gun noises and isn't even considered music by even the loosest of definitions, isn't it? Yeah, it totally is. Good luck on your very cool run, and let's get that Harmony of Despair Zip Witch Showcase met, everyone. Okay, so we oh, escaped okay. from zombies there. <laughs> That's a good. <laughs> Little bit. We escaped from zombies there, and they kidnapped the, uh, the reporter friend that we'd been accompanying the whole stage. You can go save him. We're not going to, though. But if you don't, you get the, uh, the bad ending, which is funny, because, like, uh, when you get to the bad ending, Eriko's like, you know, I lost all my friends, they're all dead. Even if you actually save all your friends, but don't save Yorg, even though Yorg doesn't show up in the character select screen at first. <laughs> He's, like, a secret character. Right. So you can save all your friends, and then get the bad ending anyway, and be like, what? Why? Huh? He's that important. Uh, but Yorg is actually based on a real person. Like, we haven't seen him much in this run, but he is a playable character added to this game and voiced by his namesake. Uh, Yorg Titel, I think is how you pronounce his name. Forgive me if I'm butchering that. He's active on Twitter. This is why I'm mentioning this. Apparently, he was he's like someone who worked in the, like... I forget precisely what this is, I'm going to butcher this, but sort of like the American side of releasing Illbleed, and he was friends with its uh, its late producer. So as a, as a show of friendship, he was added to the game as like a character, and voices himself, which I think is kind of funny. And a bit do cute. You, do you think he's watching the run? Quite possibly. Hi, Yorg. Quite possibly. Hi, Yorg. He, he does love talking <laughs> about this game on Twitter, it's the reason I bring it up. He's, he's very receptive to these kinds of, like, to, to fan inquiries over the years. That's actually so cool. Sadly, there isn't a slot for, uh, for that in the any Ascent run. There's barely a slot for it in the good ending run. Good ending is where you save everybody, and uh, due to a quirk of the good ending run, uh, it doesn't matter if you buy a character out, because there's a function where you can buy a character out even after they've died. Uh... He's, it's faster to let him die at first by not saving him, and then buy him out later. Because <laughs> he takes so long to save otherwise. <laughs> Sorry, Yorg. <laughs> this room is too big. You have to walk to, like, the other side of it to go find him. Alright, we have time for some more donations until I get to the boss, as this room is, in fact, very big. All right, well, Sean Rothwell sent in $50, says, I'm currently working at home and decided to tune into GDQ to make the day a lot more chiller. I tuned into this game I have never heard of, and not gonna lie, I want to give this a try. You're motivating the folks at home. That makes me very happy. Try it. I mean, to the best of your ability, it's quite expensive now. The, the reason I'm playing the Japanese version, incidentally, is not because faster, it's because cheaper. The American version of this game is quite the rarity nowadays, and it was never released in Europe at all. We are coming we up time. on the Oh, sorry, boss. go ahead. Yep, just, we are just about coming up on the boss now. Just about. Ouch. Pull my headphones. So this is why we picked Kevin. This is now where I get to illustrate why I picked Kevin. Male characters in Illbleed have faster and more invincible dodges, for some reason. So I do. Uh, he teleports away. He teleports behind me. Do a move! So I can stay at point blank while repeatedly dodging and not taking damage from his, like, burst move. That's what he does when he gets too close to you normally. Is he does the, the kind of, like, get off me move. But with Kevin, his dodge is so invincible that we can stay point blank 
and simply juke around like so and continue blasting him. This doesn't work with Erika at all. You'll you'll simply get hit. She, she her dodge is just not invincible enough. You don't want to be directly behind him though, because then he teleports away from you. So you kind of want to stay. Wait, I. Ah! Didn't dodge. Next, it will do it. Where is he? He's one behind me. How dare you? Complete whiff! It's a shotgun, Kevin. What are you doing? Anyway, I'll take that trade. He shrugs. Killer man dies. And that's stage five. And the game gives us a long paragraph that basically says, because you didn't rescue Yorg, you never find out who Killer Man is. So the answer to your the, the, the answer you give to the mystery is completely irrelevant unless you save Yorg. Incidentally, the correct answer is that Killer Man is Killer Man. That is the correct answer. Who would have thunk? <laughs> it, it turns out the Killer Man costume is uh, animated by the souls of the, the dead that have died at Illbleed and are seeking revenge on the park staff. That's why Killer Man is Killer Man. So, I'd like to mention... Uh, oh, uh, since we don't have the true answer, I'm just going to say it's Twitch chat. <laughs> Killer oh. Man is Twitch chat. All right. No, so Twitch now chat just makes you feel dead inside. That's something completely different. <laughs> different kind of murder. All right, we're getting into Toy Hunter now. First things first, we will rent ourselves a gun <gasps> and a horror monitor. We can just rent guns. We would like our ticket. The ticket vendor attacks us. He's just not very nice. I like how he still gives you the ticket despite wanting to attack you afterward. Yep. <laughs> like, why not just not give you the ticket? <laughs> anyway, Dude, that, there's my that toy wrench is ticket. massive. So welcome to the joint Toy Story slash Indiana Jones parody level. A thing that exists. This happens. I'm a cowboy now. Um, that That's who we are for the rest of this level. We <laughs> That's are now how cowboys cork. are made. We are now Cork, except he's actually called Inda in all of the Japanese subtitles, but they changed it for the spoken English dialogue because I presume for licensing reasons they didn't want to like upset Steven Spielberg personally. But I think it's very funny because the Japanese version only has English spoken dialogue, so it's like inconsistent between the spoken dialogue and the the text all the time. We are Cork and we are also Inda. At the same time. Quantum localization. Because uh, Illbleed is of the actually not particularly rare breed of game. Please do not look at that. Is of the not particularly rare breed of game. Where the Japanese version doesn't have any Japanese voice acting. It's only English. Anyway, the plot of this level. We're a toy and our owner dies and goes... And, and like, they're, they're buried with our, like, our toy wife. They're buried with our toy wife. That's a thing. That's what that is. I'm struggling to explain this properly because it's really, really weird. Yeah, weird uh, we is would, a, uh, nice. We're very upset about the fact that we've been separated from our toy wife. Uh, and as current most divorced toy on the planet, yep. we are trying to go to hell to reunite with our wife. That is what is occurring in this level. Her name is Sexy Doll. Attacked. Uh, thank yes. you for explaining that. <laughs> the, the wife's name is Sexy Doll. And every time uh, she appears... Uh, the character goes, S -s -s <laughs> uh, We're not going to watch the cutscenes, but y yes. They, look, they put the game in, all right? They knew what they were getting into. <laughs> I do not accept responsibility for this. The more uh, observant the, viewers may have noticed Sexy Doll marathon. earlier, by the way. <laughs> you made the schedule. You knew it was going to be like this. Well, that's also why we're at 2 a.m. <laughs> or 3 a.m. now. Right, tag the soul. It's got a fight in it. The monkeys are inside the floating soul. I don't know why. <laughs> they attack you. They're fast. They have canes. Oh, no. That, that's a sentence. That's that just, just a sentence. <laughs> it's not 
not really a complete thought. I'm just sort of saying things as they come to mind. Uh, but it's accurate. I mean, there's no lie. Anyway, throughout this level, we are also being uh, menaced by an evil version of Sonic the Hedgehog called Zodic. I'd love to show you these cutscenes, but they're actually quite long. So uh, it would ruin my ed like the estimate got ruined like right out of the gate here. So <laughs> I kind of I hustle must be acquired. But rest assured, uh, we are being menaced by an evil version of Sonic the Hedgehog, literally called Zodic. Like the, the resemblance is not accidental. This game was published by Sega. Tag this fight. Two gun wielding zombies will try and shoot me. Nope. I can dodge bullets. Good escape. Attack this right window. We're on pattern C, incidentally. I didn't clarify that, but the the, uh, the sort of tunnel room is the first indicator you get of what pattern you're on in this level. And I worked it out there that I'm on pattern C, so now I know where all of the things are. It's in the chain link fence. And banking hard right here will help me to avoid another encounter with some unfortunate enemies. We have now made it to the egg bar. And since I'm going to avoid the cutscene, the cutscenes in this level don't take the form of like cutscenes that play and then you skip. They're traps that you have to activate. So you can actually just not activate cutscenes entirely by walking around them. Uh, the thing that happens here is the court goes to a bar, gets very drunk, and then kills two eggs. He is then summarily arrested for killing two eggs, because you're not supposed to kill eggs. To jail with Cork for egg murder. I guess that wasn't very excellent. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Now we're going to our jail cell. Ra ra rather, we're going to our trial at first, yep. is what happens there. The progression of this is important, I swear. Yep. This cell... And this one on the left. Last one for this particular pattern. Yep. Okay, this is where we are judged for our crimes, except we're going to skip the cutscene where that happens by tagging the cutscene trap trigger thing. Short version, he sentences you to death. Yep. He sentences you to die. But Cork is actually pretty jazzed about this, because he wants to go to hell to reunite with his toy wife. One execution. <laughs> but what if hell's not all it's cracked up to be? Yep. <laughs> That's my response to that. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we're really going deep with this. <laughs> That's my response to that. I'm scrambling to find another one. Nope. Oh. Do you have a web page open? <laughs> no, no, these are just off the top of my head. Okay, so we need fuel to fix our friend who has been stuck in a wall there. They're our friend now. We met them in jail, but we're friends now. We must get gas to fuel our new friend, Potodon. He explains to us a better plan for visiting our toy wife. As it turns out, that if toys die, uh, they don't go to the right kind of... We get very, like, metaphysical at this point, because it turns out there's multiple kinds of hell in the toy-verse, and simply, like, regular die doesn't take you to the right one. You must, you must do more complicated endeavors to reach the correct version of hell. I'm honestly wondering how much of this I should even explain. You know, this is very important lore. It's, it's important dark. lore, it's but it dark. also sounds absolutely... Like, like it, it, it sounds bad with context. Without context, I feel, I feel like... Anyway, we make our escape. We make our escape. Cork lives another day. Yeah, um, story-wise, uh, this part's probably the darkest in uh, a lot of games, uh, for a lot of reasons. Let's just say, uh, his owner is going to be killed by Cork. I'll just say that. 
get we'll get we'll get to toy hell via a different mechanism that i'm honestly not going to explain in depth because while the game presents it all cheery and funny i think if i like say it flippantly it will not come off as funny in the slightest oh no anyway we must proceed to town we escape the sewers, Pododon gives us his chip, we can put that into another model of a Pododon to sort of, like, transplant his memory somewhere else. So now, we are in town and trying to find a house we can sneak into. When we do this, I'm evading enemy encounters with these lines, by the way. But also, check out this sign. Caution, recently ghost and so on increased in this town. As for the children, to be careful. What, uh? Excellent. So as for the children to be careful, we go in this window. We are now in someone's house. You put it on this chip, and that opens the passageway... To Kingdom Hearts? To Kingdom Hearts, yes. Behind the door <laughs> is Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it, I don't know. Do a whole different speed run, let's go. We've made it to Toy Hell now. It, it, <laughs> that completely <laughs> threw me off. Was that a game? I'm or so like, sorry. Uh... It literally did look like the door. Anyway, anyway we're fighting, fighting Sonic the Hedgehog now. <laughs> this is yeah. occurring. We're fighting Sonic the Hedgehog now. I gotta shoot his rings. The rings are his power source, as is well known. That is how hedgehogs work. Uh, cheers to Anonymous for hey, saying gotta go fast like, what, 10 minutes ago or yep. something? Yep, gotta, you, yeah, you nailed it. Even does Sonic. a little finger waggle. Legally distinct Sonic. <laughs> they didn't even need legally distinct Sonic. It, like, this game was published by Sega, like, they knew. Legally stinked Sonic? They didn't particularly care. They were actually way into it. Yeah, this isn't like, like, like cheeky... Oh man, let's like you know, let's see what we can get past the uh, you know the boys upstairs kind of things. Like Sega was on board for this, like they knew, <laughs> they published the game. I have killed Sonic once and for all, and Cork reunites with his toy wife in hell, thus concluding Toy Hunter. Y yay! Yay! <laughs> 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 That's such a sad story. I mean, he seems pretty really happy about it. Yeah. I, that's, that's, yeah, that's true. Right, now we proceed <laughs> to the final boss. The final boss of Illbleed. But the final boss of Illbleed is a strange case because it actually gives you the choice of three different final bosses. There's, you can fight a actually fightable version of the Cashman Spider from the earlier levels. Uh, an enemy that is a reuse of an enemy from a different game this development studio made called Blue Stinger. Uh, the enemy is the Bull Stinger. And Oh No Man, who is absolutely impossible. Despite the funny name, we're not doing Oh No Man. Oh No Man will kill me. A lot. <laughs> just just for fun, there's Oh No Man. Look at him. See? He's great. Oh No Man! But we're not going to fight him. He's, he's very <laughs> difficult. He does like 6,000 damage. We're going to fight Bull Stinger. So this is the final boss. I have gun. He'll try and leap at me. I'll do a dodge. And he'll try and stab me. I'll do a dodge. Heaven's faster dodge helps with this. So like, that's the general game plan of this. Is like we we dodge, we take our shots, we try. And, when he does point blank jumps like that, you try very hard not to get owned because the hitbox comes out very quickly. But otherwise, this is the game plan. I'm doing good damage here. Good dodge, just in time, just in time. It's hard to predict these like little stutters that he does though, where sometimes he like recoils from taking damage. I'm surprised I didn't get hit by that. Point blank upward jumps like that are very easy to get hit by. Because they come out very quickly. Looking good. Time will be up as soon as I defeat this guy and get bounced halfway across the room. Time will come up as soon as this fades to black. I've done it. I've killed the man. Time! That's GG. 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 <laughs> Don't even tell me what the end time was. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I mean, to be fair, they did restart the timer when you restarted uh, the run. So. Well, 
Thank you very much for doing that. I know uh, that went off the rails a bit quickly, but thank you very much for sticking with it. That was Illbleed. That was Illbleed for the Dreamcast. It's quite a unique breed of a game. I very much enjoyed uh, routing and working on the uh, the strats for this game over the years. I've been running this for a few years now. It's it's kind of a, a run I'm embarrassingly a bit proud of because <laughs> uh, I've worked hard on it. I've worked hard on it. Illbleed is not a very popular game, unsurprisingly, so I've been largely sort of left to my own devices for of this stuff. Uh, I'd also like to shout out uh, uh, Sun Paul, who's doing the commentary on the Japanese restream. Paul san Thank you very much. And yeah, that's all bleed. Big Dices, Maxi, anything you want to say? Uh, thank you so much for having me. I sorry I threw you off with Kingdom Hearts, but that was too <laughs> funny. And honestly, I just want to say, like, uh, I know that there was that that mess up at the beginning with the BIOS. Yeah. yeah, but honestly, you took it really well. You did amazing. Like that was that was so much fun. So thank you for having me. I know now that ill bleed is light. <laughs> <laughs> And on my end, I'm McDysis. Uh, it was great being able to be a part on this couch. Uh, I have been uh, pushing, punching on Elbleed for a while now. I kept putting on the uh, speedruns in the crypt, and uh, I think it's like, what, four times there, and I'm out here. So it's just yeah, kind of nice every, to see that. Every time McDysis would put me on the hotfix for this game, I would get a PB in it by like a minute, and that's probably the reason it's now at GDQ, because it's gotten a lot faster as a result of doing that. I yes, like if Elbleed. you enjoyed the run, uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash punchy. Please follow me there. I would appreciate it very much. There will indeed be plenty of ill bleed over there. I enjoy the game very much. You can expect to see it over there. Yes. Thank you very much for watching. Well, thank you so, so much. Punchy, I have never seen Illbleed before, and uh, I can I can really confidently say that I have no idea what I just watched. But it was amazing. It was. I think we can all agree that that was amazing. I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. I have a donation here for $25 from Killerman Twitch Chat who says, and I would have got away with it too if it weren't for you meddling speedrunners. <laughs> oh, and I have a donation here from Dave for $100. He says, I didn't even know AGDQ was happening. Made my week. Good luck on all the runs. Well, y'all, with the uh, with that, that is the end of my time hosting for now. I'll be back again tomorrow, but y'all should not go anywhere. I am leaving you in the incredibly capable hands of Addy Joe. He'll be taking over just after this break. Y'all take care.
speed running fans around the world, you are watching AGDQ 2023 online, powered by Twitch and benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation. My name is Addy Joe, and it is my pleasure to join you for the upcoming run. We've got a $10 donation from Cool Majaba, who says, Punchy in the GDQ is a mood I didn't remember I needed until just now. Thank you to the runners, host, and all of the awesome background crew for this awesome event, and thank you for that run. Before we get over to our next upcoming run, we're going to get this over to Jay Hobbs, who is interviewing our Wavetail runner, Glint. Hey, take it away, Hobbs. Welcome back to AGDQ 2023 online, folks. Thanks for sticking through the break and for joining us for another interview with a fantastic runner, this time named Glint. Glint, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. How are you, Hobbs? I am doing great. And we have uh, known each other for a little bit now through the It Takes Two speedrunning community. But yeah. you're actually going to be bringing a different game to us uh, today, a game that I think not a ton of people are aware with, and they absolutely should be aware of because it's an extremely cool one. Tell me a little bit about Wavetail and why people should tune in for it. Yeah, so Wavetail is this cool little 3D platformer that came out um Last, last year, I guess, in 2021, came out on Stadia originally. Um, and it's like, I would call it a cute solar ash if people have heard of that game. It's got really cool movement where you're going to be traversing over waves. You got like cool dashes and you're going to be doing cool grapple cancels, keeping a lot of momentum and going super fast and keeping lots of speed, which is always a lot of fun to watch and play as well. Yeah, I have noticed that in some of the games that you tend to pick, you, uh, movement seems to be a really big factor for you. Is is that accurate? And if so, like what about the the specifics of this game really brought you in on that? Yeah, for sure. Movement is the biggest draw of any speed game that I play. Um, I could literally play a game that's just blocks that move in a cool way, and I would enjoy it a lot. This game uh, really drew me in with how uh, the momentum conservation works and how um, it's a good mix between uh, long stretches of keeping a lot of speed and then a really tight platforming on these little islands that you need to complete objectives on. So you traverse between these islands, complete little objectives, and then move on to the next one with like cool flowing movement. And it's really fun in that way. And the game looks great too, like on top of it. I think it, I think it's a very yeah. kind of pretty game as well. Uh, so tell me a bit about how you you know, kind of got into speedrunning because I, like I said, we've known each other for a little bit, not not even that long at this point, just from uh, it, since yeah. uh, I jumped a little bit into It Takes Two and you really helped me out a lot <laughs> along the way. Yeah. Um, but you've been a speedrun fan and a speedrunner yourself for a lot longer than that. Yeah, no, I've been, I've been around the community for a really long time. Um, I joined the community probably back in 2012, 2013. Uh, I like a lot of people ran into uh, Narcissa doing a Wind Waker run back in the day. Was browsing Twitch and saw that it had an obscene amount of viewers. Uh, clicked on it and saw that Narcissa was on world record pace. So first ever speed run that I watched was actually one of Narcissa's Wind Waker world records, which was super super cool. And then after that, I ended up watching HDQ 2013, um, and then been watching the event and other stuff within the community ever since. It seems like such a great hook is, is oh yeah, the very first run I watch is a world record. You don't get a, a slew of resets or anything. You just get yeah, into a No, run. exactly. And of one of my favorite childhood games too. It's one of the only Zelda games I ever beat growing up. So it was uh, really impactful for me uh, as a first speed game to watch. It's super cool. Yeah. Have you found yourself to be more of a like no reset runner or are you still, like do you like to, com to kind of go for the full complete runs even if you know that maybe it's not got as great of a chance of PBing or are you all about optimizing those times, getting that uh, all those time saves. It, it always depends on the game or category. Um, sure, it depends on the length of the run, right? If it's a, it's five minutes, you, I'm I'm all about those resets. But if it's like an hour and a half, um, I'm like, oh, I bonked. It's fine. We can we can keep going. <laughs> very fair, very fair. It makes it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> uh, so talking yeah. a little bit about your speed run history, you've got a variety of games. Again, a lot of, a lot of movement involved in a bunch of them. But uh, Wave Tail is what you're going to be running. To, uh, today, but It Takes Two is a big one I mentioned, but you've also run a short hike, which is kind of very different, I would say, like a lot yeah. less movement on the surface of that game, even though there is still some depth there, uh, and games like Sheepo, like indie games, or Portal 2, you did some co-op running. Uh, yeah. What has kind of been 
maybe your your favorite game to run over time or one that maybe you find yourself coming back to or just loving to to dive into each time um i think it it's it's not even like a particular game maybe but a genre which would be co-op games yeah i think uh, a lot of people in the speedrunning community tend to not realize that you can you can play speedruns with friends and it's a lot of the time it's a lot of fun um, to be able to complete a task with a, a good friend of yourself and watch yourselves improve. Um, so both Portal, uh, because I play Portal 2 co-op, and um, It Takes Two are fantastic for that exact reason. Um, I've sunk literally thousands of hours into both of them combined, um, and there's so much fun for that exact reason. Yeah, you went right where I was hoping you would go with that that answer because yeah. I could not agree more. The co-op runs are extremely fun. Um, but we are seeing a solo venture from you this time around and your first time here on the big stage. What's it feel like to be showcasing a run for AGDQ 2023? Uh, it's quite literally a dream come true. Uh, like I mentioned, the first event that I watched was AGDQ 2013, which was a decade ago. <laughs> um, and I've been a fan of the event since. And uh, I always like uh, I was like I'll get a run in one day, and I got a run. I got a run in one day, and that it, that day is today. So yeah. <laughs> come watch my run. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a blast. If, cool movement. I was gonna say if, cool there, if there's one little hook you had to give anybody who's never seen this game before, doesn't know anything about it, why should they jump in? Is it because you're running it on Stadia, or is it are we a little too late for that? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, a little too late. Thankfully, it came out on it came out on Steam like a month ago, so we're fine. We got our okay. we're bases are covered. Um, but I think if you're a fan of any game with a like cool movement or like cool art, because I know Hobbs mentioned it earlier, the art in this game is like amazing. Um, I would definitely drop by. The movement is fantastic. It has a beautiful flow to it, um, and I have a bunch of wonderful commentators joining me as well. So uh, if you need some company at that time of day. Come drop by and watch the run. It'll be a blast. Excellent. Well, everybody, you can get excited and ready for that run of Wavetail by Glint. Glint, thank you so much for joining me for the interview today. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right, I'm going to send you all back to the speed runs, back to the action. So thank you all so much and enjoy more Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online. Welcome back, everybody. You know, I just looked at our donation total and I am blown away that you have all helped raise over $336, almost $337,000 for PCF. Your generosity never ceases to amaze me. Speaking of which, we've got a $10 donation from Prizeime that says, Love this cause and event. And I cannot agree more with you. I was lucky enough, everybody, to get a sneak peek of our next run yesterday. And let me tell you, you were in for a treat. Now, you've enjoyed his It Takes Two on It's Dangerous to Go Alone on Hotfix and Little Gator Game Runs on Cutie Roos, Legally Cute, recently. But please, join me in a warm welcome of Glint as he vanquishes the gloom and surfs the beautiful waters of Wavetail, any percent, no major skips. Take it away, Glint. <laughs> <laughs> 